Well, hello and good evening, uh, everyone. It's good that we're able to get back together again for an evening reflection. And it's quite a significant evening in many ways because I'm informed that this is the 92nd of the evening reflections that we've done. If you remember, we started, this was part of the online ministry that we developed during the pandemic. You know, these were dark and difficult days, but there were also days when we had to learn new skills and perhaps uh, launch out in new projects. And it's been good to be able to do these broadcasts, if I can call them that, and good to be working with Chris Scott and others in order to make sure that we kept in touch during this time. I've appreciated the, the feedback that there's been over the 92, uh, and it's difficult for me to say this, but um, this is the last one that we're going to do. As you know, I'll be retiring at the end of September. I've resumed our evening services, and I just feel that, that this is enough for me to be getting on with at present. There will be an audio recording of our evening service if you want to log on to, to that. And also the, the morning service, of course, will be recorded in video form as well as audio. So there are plenty of ways that we can still keep in touch online. But I'm grateful that we've had this opportunity to learn new skills. And uh, it's been quite amazing, actually, the, the number of people that have been in touch from well beyond the shores of our own land who have benefited in some way from our online ministry. But um, it's just part of the, the whole process of, of uh, I was going to say winding up, but I suppose it's winding down if you're uh, retiring. Um, but uh, anyway, I don't want to get down that down that road too far. There'll be plenty of time for sadness when we leave, if I can paraphrase uh, Chris Christopherson at this point. But uh, before we begin our reflection tonight, let's, let's pray together. God, our Father, we, we give thanks that you have kept and guided us through the, the years, particularly when there have been dark and difficult days, not only for us as individuals, but for us as a community. And we thank you that you've sustained us through the, the worst of times, that we are in a good place tonight and ready to learn together once again from your word. And we thank you that during this time, new skills have been learned in which we've been able to communicate the gospel and that this has brought encouragement and help to so many people. We pray that we'll go forward into the future, encouraged by all that has been achieved and looking forward to new challenges that we'll face in the future. Because we know that you're present with us and we know that nothing we do for the kingdom is ever in vain. And we pray all of this in the name of Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Well, folks, um, Gabriel and I are attending a 70th birthday party tomorrow. I hesitate to, I, I, uh, I'm quick to say that it's not uh, either of us who will be celebrating our 70th. It's a very old, not very old, an old, what I meant to say was old and very dear friend of ours. We will be having a, a, a celebration with family and friends in a hotel over in the, the south side. And we're looking forward to that because there'll be other people there that we haven't seen for quite some time. And it's always good to get together with old friends. It's amazing, though, you know, when you, you come to think of it, how, uh, you know, so many people regard getting old as something of an achievement you know you, you clock up clock up the 
the years, and you're congratulated for for doing it. Um, when really, I, I think that we have to get around to maybe thinking of every year that we have as a gift that is given to us. It's not something that we do. It's, it's something that is given to us. Years ago, um, when I had a significant birthday, um, a friend of mine uh, wrote a message to me and said, uh, old age is a gift that not everybody is given. And that's, it was a bit cheeky because I don't really think I was terribly old at that time. But uh, I think there's a, there's a lot of truth in that. It is a gift that not everyone is given. We tend to think of old age as something that we've achieved all the years that we've run up on the clock, as it were. But every single one of them is a gift that has fallen to us in the providence of God, not only for, for our lives, but for the, the ongoing life of the planet. I remember um, when I was just a, a baby minister, I had a year as a member of uh, Glasgow Presbytery, and a former moderator of the General Assembly, Reverend Tom Murchison, he was being congratulated for 50 years in the ministry. And um, very wise man was Dr. Murchison. And uh, his in his opening remarks, he said that he found it astonishing that folk were congratulated for living a long time. <laughs> and uh, I've always uh, I've always remembered that. But it's just something that's part of our mindset. And we 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 mourn all the more when someone passes who has been in their 30s, their 40s, their, their 50s, we, we say, oh, it's just too young for someone to die. And we, and we feel the pain of it when perhaps full potential hasn't been reached. So, you know, the years pass by and, and we regard it as being something of an achievement for us when, when really we should be thinking of it as a, a gift and what matters really more than anything else in our lives is the quality of the life that we've lived. If you think of some of the people in the Old Testament who lived to amazing ages, you know, not only into their 90s but into their hundreds and uh, there's always this controversy about how the Bible measures a, a year but there is no doubt that there were people in Scripture who lived to a very long time. They were said to be full of years. They died full of years. But it's always emphasised to us in Scripture that it's not just the number of years we live, but the quality of our walk with God during these years, our relationship with God and how we have worked out our faith in, in the days that, that, that we are given. Very early in, in the life of the, the, the people of Israel, after they were released from slavery in Egypt, they were given the Ten Commandments. Moses was given the Ten Commandments to, to share with the community of Israel. And, and to call them to live out these commandments in their lives. And it's, it's quite striking, actually, that the, the first block of commandments are there to keep us close to God, to keep our relationship with God fresh and, and, and alive. And the remaining commandments are there for us to have the, the best of relationships with those with whom we have to do our families, our friends, our, our neighbours. It's, it's all about how we love God and how we love our neighbour. These were the two great principles that the people of, of Israel lived by. And all the great folk in the Old Testament, they may have been full of years, but they also had that quality 
which actually reflected the very being of God. And there was, there was no one in whom that was more obvious than, than our Lord Jesus. I mean, he once said that he didn't come to abolish the law, but to fulfill the law. If you wanted to know what it was like to live your life in harmony with God and in service to your neighbor, then you had to look at Jesus. And when you think of it, no one made, has made more impact on human history than, than Jesus. He was only 33 when he was crucified. A very young life. If we knew someone who had died at that age, we would mourn the, the loss of great potential. We would say that's far too young. For, for anyone to, to pass. And yet, the perfect life, the only perfect life that has ever been lived was a short life. And I think that's something for us to take to our hearts. What I was saying at the beginning, it's not the years that we live, but the quality of those years as we have lived them out. Martin Luther King, in a speech, once said that he had the desire to, to live a long life. He said uh, longevity has its place. But what was most important to him was to do God's will. And he was willing to face all the, the dangers, all the challenges of being uh, a leader of his, his people in order to, to do God's will. Now, the day after he, he made that speech, he was assassinated at the age of 39 years of age. But the people who heard him on that last night when, when he delivered his last speech, I hope remembered what he said about longevity. It has its place. None of us would want anything else but to live a long life. But what's most important is that we do God's will. And I would like to just quote from the, uh, the hymn that I took a theme from uh, tonight. Uh, if you remember, Lord for the Years, where in the first verse, we have sung together, Lord, for the years your love has kept and guided, urged and inspired us, cheered us on our way, sought us and saved us, pardoned and provided. Lord of the years, we bring our thanks today. We give thanks to, to God for the years that we've been granted in his great and loving providence. And we pray that in the years that lie ahead, we ourselves will be committed to walking more fully in his ways. Let's pray. God our Father, we give thanks to you for the many ways that you have blessed our years and enabled us to go through our lives with a knowledge of your love for us and also the grace to, to live our lives according to your will. We thank you for people that we've known who, whether they've been taken from us young or whether they've lived a long life, have reflected something of your being in their lives and been an example to us and have enabled us to believe that we too can live our lives more fully in harmony with your will for us. And we pray, Father, that you would go forward with us into this, into these uncertain years that, that lie before us and enable us to know that whatever the circumstances, we can be absolutely sure that your presence is with us, that nothing will ever separate us from your love and that your good purpose for our lives will be lived out and it will be fulfilled. Bless our lives tonight. Bless our families, our friends, whatever they are, especially those who are finding life difficult at present. Father, we pray that your 
voice would reach the depths of their being to, to heal them, to encourage them, to grant them peace. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you.